Hi, this is Steve Brissetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the Movie Picks Guide to DVD Architect. And here we are in part four of our four-part basic training with DVD Architect. So we've created a basic menu. We've added media to it. We've even added a scene selection sub-menu to it. And now it's time to burn our disc. Launching that process is as simple as clicking the Make DVD button at the top of the screen, or it will say Make Blu-ray, of course, if you're working on a Blu-ray. And when you do, you see the option of Preparing, Burning, or Writing Master. If you are sending your DVD or Blu-ray disc to a authoring facility, that is a group that is going to continue to build out your disc and produce your discs, this will create the files that you want to hand off to them. And if you select that option, you see that it will walk you through the process. It's really a very simple wizard. Let's stick with some of the basics here, though, on our basic training. If I select Prepare, then I get to this screen here where it allows me to select where the prepared files are going to be saved. Now, your prepared files are your DVD or your Blu-ray disc. They are everything that is required to make your DVD or Blu-ray disc, except that rather than burn directly to a disc, they're saved to a spot on your hard drive. From there, you'll be able to burn DVDs or Blu-rays as often as you want from those files. I always choose this selection because uh, this allows me to keep a master of my disk files. Now, if you're making a DVD, it's going to save your files as a couple of folders. If you're making a Blu-ray, your prepared files will be saved as an ISO or an image file. This indicates where those files are going to be saved. Go back. Even if you select Burn, know that your prepared files are still being saved to a spot on your hard drive. So they will be saved, they will be archived on your hard drive regardless, and you can browse and select where they're going to be saved to. But right now we're going to burn our current project. So we just follow the screens. When I click Next, it will send me some messages. All it's telling me here is that my uh, audio will be recompressed because uh, apparently the specs I set up for this DVD did not match the audio file I provided for it. Not a problem, that's not going to take that long. You will also have all of your DVD menus, your Blu-ray menus are also going to have to be recompressed because they're not yet video. And so the program needs to turn them into video. Don't let these messages alarm you. Uh, the program will let you know if there's something seriously wrong that's gonna keep the disc from being burned. Click Next and you get to finally the burn screen. We can give our disk a title if we want. And as you can see, I have my uh, disk drive selected. That's really all there is to it. Click finish and it burns your disk. Now, like I say, you also have the option of saving your disk files to your hard drive rather than burning them. I always like to do that. Then I can test drive my disk files on my computer, make sure that my DVD or my Blu-ray Blu disk looks great. And then I can use this program, by the way, to burn those files to a disk simply by, let's go back, back, selecting previously prepared folder, and then browsing to the prepared files for my DVD or Blu-ray. It's a great program, and we have only scratched the surface with this program. I hope I've whetted your appetite, and you shall take a look at it. I'm just amazed at how powerful this program is. A lot of bang for the buck here. Now, if you want to know more about this program, be sure to check out my book, The MoviePicks.com Guide to DVD Architect. And if you want to know how it interfaces with programs like Vegas Pro or Vegas Movie Studio, check out The MoviePicks.com Guide to Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. All of those books are available at the MoviePicks store as well as Amazon.com. I'm Steve Rizzetti. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again real soon.